Hey y'all, what's going on? So for today's video, I'm gonna try. I might get to I might I might get the praising. So let's hope this ponytail don't fall off. Oh, y'all thought this was me? Did y'all think this was me? Huh? It's not. Um, I don't know what happened here. I swear I got the most stubborn edges of all time. Like I just I'm going to pray about it. Um, hopefully, we don't have no distractions. It's nighttime. Maybe it's a little calm. Oh, you know, you might hear a door or two. But um, we're going to do, and if y'all see me occasionally drink a little bit of, mm-hmm. Y'all already know me. Y'all know I'm going to have my coffee. Girl, this look like, <laughs> it's so watered down. Child. Anyway, so today we're going to do a motivation slash reaction video because we're going to react to or I'm going to redo or commentate on a video that I did five years ago. And this video is on my YouTube page. I have been having my YouTube page for about five years and the video is old, but it is on my YouTube page. I want to say it's like the second video from the bottom. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Okay, so it is a video of me speaking at an event, um, Romico Dawkins Ministries event called uh, Overcoming Brokenness. So I wanted to do this because I see y'all like the mini motivation videos. They pop in. I'm trying to get y'all a little, little dose of motivation because you know I am the unfiltered motivator. Like, that's what I do. And so God was like, um, you should do this. Cause I thought about it on my way home while I was thinking about content and it came, it came up on me and I was like, dang, that makes sense. Now, just a, a PSA, this video is, is kind of old again. So it, it, the volume and the way times was set up back then, you know, we didn't have good phones. <laughs> Christian shout out to her recorded this video. Um, so I hope the volume isn't too low on it, but we gonna wish for the best. It don't even matter. It don't even matter because you still gonna you still gonna fill it up in your chest. So it's old. <laughs> it's a little you know lower quality, but that's cool because we we glow up and we grow up, amen. So we gonna go ahead and go through this video, and then I'll probably stop it on occasion just to reiterate something that I said. It's like eleven minutes long, so um, let's go. Make sure I'm recording, child, because y'all know. Oh, and you will hear um, background noise because I did it at a church. So there was an audience, so you might hear like some amen, some, some clapping, some coughing, some doors moving. You might hear all that. So just a disclaimer, um, but, you know, continue. Pause. Okay, so that part. And a lot of this, my story is all over YouTube. You can Google it. You can read Troubled, purchase it, all that on my website. And I'll put the links down in the description. So what I said was um, my dad was murdered when I was 11. My godfather right after that. Sorry, my grandpa right after that. My godfather right after that. So I didn't have a male role model. I didn't have my dad. So a lot of us as women... Who don't have their dad or their father in their life whether he has passed away whether he is just decided not to be in your life whether he's incarcerated any of those things when you are a woman or a girl I should say and you grow up without a father it changes you it affects you all the way up into adulthood it, it, it never goes away that feeling never goes away because you'll hear you have daddy issues or you have mommy issues like that's a thing because you don't know what to look up to. You don't, you don't have an example of a good man in your life. 
you don't have that love that only a father can give. Like my mama tried, but it's not the same. And so you hold on to that. And because my dad was murdered, he is no way for me to communicate with him, even if I wanted to. So I found myself instead of turning to God, but again, you know, I was 11, I was raised uh, Catholic, but instead of turning to God and knowing who he is, I started as I got older because all the men were passing away in my life. I started as I got older to look for the love that I should have had in a father in men. And that's not, that's not the right thing to do. That's not what I should have done. And I wish somebody would have told me that back then, but they didn't. But that's okay, because in order for me to get to where I am now, in order for me to be telling you this, I had to go through that. Everything that I went through is so I could get here. So that brokenness from not having a dad follows you. Because even now it's hard. Like Father's Day for me is way harder than March 14th, which is the day my daddy died. Father's Day, I'm no good. I'm no good. And I have siblings on my dad's side. And I also look at like my friends' dads or like dads, like other people's dads. And I kind of, I don't say adopt them as my own, but it's kind of like, oh, you know, because you know when we friends are like, oh, hey, mama, hey, daddy, you know, what's up? Because they, we kind of adopt them like when we have a close friend that has a father. So I find myself kind of doing that subconsciously because I didn't have that. And then sometimes, especially on Father's Day, when I see all these posts, because I stay away from social media now, but when I see all these posts, people posting their dads, and it, it's like, I don't have mine. And I want that. And I can't have that. Especially because somebody decided that they wanted to kill him for no reason. And because domestic violence exists. And it is October, it's Domestic Violence Awareness Month and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And I will be doing a video on domestic violence um, for the month of October. So somebody decided they wanted to take him away from me. And I had to live with that. And I still live with that. I just live with it in a different way. So let's continue the video because I get to that part. Okay, so back then, um, and this is from February 25th, 2016, back then I had not yet released that the person that molested me was my stepfather. I have since then released that to the public. I have, y'all know, or if you don't know, I got a video on that too. I did go through the whole uh, court process 14 years later, which was, I want to say two years ago, two or three years ago, to have him put away in jail, but I did not win the case because it was so long ago. <clears throat> so <clears throat> back then and when I wrote trouble nobody knew who it was because in the effort to protect my mama in the effort to protect my sister who I assumed didn't know I held it in like I didn't want to put him out there now when the camera cut off at this event I then told who it was because I would tell who it is it's just that it wasn't on the record it wasn't recorded it wasn't nowhere to be found um, but then I wrote an article about it releasing it so that's who that is that I'm talking about. Um, and well, I'm gonna let the video continue before I say that. And then also, like I said, we hold stuff in and that's not good. And I used to do that a lot. I used to hold everything in. I used to write as a form of expression and getting stuff out. I did not go to therapy back then. I didn't start going to therapy until I went when I tried to commit suicide like three times because that's the, you know, if you have insurance, you get the three free sessions and then I stopped going. Like my mom didn't want to take me anymore. So I didn't really just start going to therapy until I was older, like grad school older. So I didn't, I held all that stuff in. I harbored it. I was a very angry person. 
Um, I would break stuff like it was I would be promiscuous like it was so much because I was holding in that pain instead of letting it go So instead of breaking free I held it in and that's what we can't do that. We have to let that pain go You have to first of all, I'm all for a therapy but in the event that you're not ready for therapy find some type of outlet to let that pain go don't harbor that don't harbor that pain because it's gonna affect you it's not gonna affect nobody else it's gonna affect you in your life because whoever wronged you or whoever the person is they get to sleep at night but with you holding that in you're affecting yourself you're harming yourself so when you overcome and when you release that, you're doing it for yourself. You're not doing it for nobody else. You're doing it for yourself. And then you can move on to healing. But you can't move on to healing until you learn to let that go. Okay? I take pain into purpose. Pain purpose. They didn't believe me. And the crazy part is I've never been a talker <laughs> yet. That's all I do now. <laughs> like that's all I do now. Like I talk <laughs> like I'm a motivator. I'm a motivational speaker. So it's ironic that that happened and I didn't use to talk like at all, like at all, like at all. I was a writer. I mean, I still am. That's how I became an author, but you wouldn't get nothing out of me. The birth of trouble. Christian in his camera. I knew <laughs> it was something I was supposed to do, but I didn't know what it was. So he said, over this, is what you're gonna do. this is what you're going to do. You're going to write your story, and you're going to go around, and you're going to tell your story, and you're going to change somebody's life. You're going to help young women out here, especially teenagers, who are making the same mistakes that you made. You can prevent them from making those mistakes by saying, look, I've been there. I've done this. That's not the way to go. See God, and he will show you the way. Hmm. So, and mind you, I was uh, 24 when I did this event. Um, I'm 29 now. So, I started speaking early. I started speaking around 20. Let's see, Trouble came out when I was 21. After that, everything skyrocketed. So, what I'm saying is here, and it's amazing how this was five years ago, and I've grown so much even since then, is that I thought, 
especially when I was in high school, because I always loved accounting. Shout out to Evans Financial Solutions, shameless plug. And I thought when I grow when I grow up, I'm going to become a CPA, I'm going to take the CPA exam, and I'm going to own my own firm. Or I'm going to work at a firm for a long time, then I'm going to own my own. Like, everything was accounting for me. That's That's it. I never thought I was going to be an author. I never thought I was going to be a speaker. I never thought I was going to start a nonprofit. Everything that I'm doing now, you couldn't tell me that back then. And it's literally like God was like, nah, like you can do accounting, but that ain't what I called you to do. Like that's your passion. It's just not your purpose. You have a purpose and this is your purpose. Like I'm going to let you know right now, this is what I created you for. And again, I didn't know that back then. So it was a shock to me. And I didn't know what to do. Like, I literally just jumped in. I didn't know nothing about what I was doing. It just flowed. Like, I'm able to be a motivator. When I tell you I don't, when I do speaking engagements, I don't practice first. I don't practice first. Um, I don't do none of that. I just literally talk off the brain. Like, it's literally effortless for me even i could be in the middle of talking to somebody about something completely different and it don't take but one sentence or for them to say something and then i'm automatically in motivation mode it just clicks like that so that has always been my purpose i just didn't know that at the time i didn't know how to tap into it until god touched me and said this is your purpose and then it just started flowing it started flowing and that's how it happened And I can use that story to share with, you know, everybody and women and things like that. And so uh, turn your pain into purpose. And another thing is overcoming, rebuilding, things like that. The first step to doing that is forgiveness. And I didn't know that. And so you hold on to this anger of people, and that's not it. You have to forgive. That's the first step is forgiveness. And people always say, Before I get into that testimony on my, my test of uh, forgiveness, I always preach that. I always preach that. Forgiveness, y'all got to forgive, bro. Like, I'm, I'm being real with y'all because y'all know I'm always real. You got to forgive, period. I don't care who it is. I don't care what they did. Like I said, I've been raped three times, and the most recent time was literally like last year. And the person who did it is like, I forgive you. Like, I'm not harboring that pain. Like, is it a messed up situation? Do I still have to deal with it? Yes. But I'm not harboring that pain. Like, I've grown so much, and I realize I grew after it happened, and I did. it literally affects me, but it didn't affect me to the point where I became depressed and I was unable to do the things that God called me to do. That's when I realized how much I've grown and how powerful God truly is and how strong I can be. And... That's how I was able to talk to my stepdad. Now, I haven't talked to him in years. Uh, I want to say like 2017, 2018, something like that. But I don't want to see him. <laughs> like, I would much rather not see him again. Like I told y'all, it was a whole legal thing involved. So do I forgive him? Yes. But that doesn't mean at the time, and a lot of people always ask, like, well, how were you able to talk to him? How were you able to be around him? And it's literally like forgiveness. And then back then, you got to think, my mom didn't leave him. So I was forced to grow up in a house with him, regardless of what he did. Everybody knew what he did. Like, my family knew what he did. But it was a matter of they didn't really believe it. So I had to grow up in that house. You know, I had to, I didn't have a choice because what, I didn't have anywhere else to go. My grandmother was too old to take care of me every day like that. I spent most of my days over there, but at this time, I'm a teenager now. And I didn't want to go to CPS. Like, I wanted to be with my mama. So I had to bite the bullet. <laughs> like, I had to bite the bullet and just do it. And I had to learn to forgive. Now, that's how I ended up acting out sexually, but I still had to forgive. 
And I learned as I got older what forgiveness truly was. I think back then I was just, I didn't acknowledge what happened. So I kind of just tried, tried to keep going with normal life in order to avoid it. But as I got older, I was like, you know what, bro? I forgive you. <laughs> like, I ain't even, I'm not finna hold on to that. Like, you're not finna ruin my life like that. It's not happening. So y'all have to learn to forgive people. Again, you're not doing it for them. You're doing it for yourself. Like, you're doing it for yourself. It's not for them. It's not for nobody else but you. And you got to think, again, y'all know I'm a spiritual person. If God can forgive us for the things that we do, because we sin 24-7. So if he can forgive us, then why is it that we can't forgive other people? It's, if you want him to forgive you, forgive other, other people. Because he forgive you for your sins. Jesus died on the cross to save us. So why not forgive other people? Why are you holding on to that? That's, on, that's bad for you. It's unhealthy. So you got to let that go. You got to forgive. I didn't say forget, but you have to forgive. It's important. It's very, very important. Splitting in it. Holding on to that pain. And we sat on the same pew. Before I before I go further, um, 
again, release the silence. So that, that was always my line. Uh, stop the violence, release the silence. So we have to learn to release what's hurting us. And because if you don't release it, if you don't get it out, it's going to hurt you literally, like I said, from the inside out. So no, and even if you release, it doesn't have to be publicly. Like you don't have to do what I'm doing and tell your story around the world and to other people, like uh, be a speaker. You can, it's a lot of women that do that. It's a lot of men who do that. Um, but that's, you don't have to do it that way. Just find your way to release the silence. Like, that's why, you know, we want to lower the statistics on domestic violence. Like, it, people don't go to jail. Like, it's, I, you know, I can get in, I'm going to get into that on another video. But you got to release that. You got to release that story because, again, God puts, puts us through tests so that we can have a testimony. So if you don't share your testimony, you don't share what God has done for you, then you're not helping other people like that. You got to help other people because you never know who's going through something. Like I see comments, I get messages all the time about how I motivated them through what I said. Or people will be like, um, the same thing happened to me. And they not ready yet. Like, and you have to do it in your own time. You have to pray about it and you have to do it in your own time. It does not have to be forced. You don't have to do it right away. But eventually you're going to have to release that silence. You're going to have to you get that out. It's a part of healing. When I tell you, you're going to feel so much better afterwards. Even if you got to just talk to one person, if you go to therapy, if you talk to me, if you talk to somebody that you really can confide in, it, it's going to help. When I tell y'all, when you release that and that burden come up off you, whoo, like it feels amazing to release that. Like amazing. And I, I can't even put it into words. Like, you literally have to feel it for yourself. It's amazing. Amen. Girl, if that wasn't a, if that wasn't a word, if that wasn't a word, and again, stuff I, I like literally stuff just comes to me as I'm talking. And in case you didn't hear it, what I said was there is a reason why God puts our eyes in front of us and not behind us. Because he wants us to see the future ahead and not pay attention to the past that's behind us. Because your past is what's going to determine your future. I always say, don't look in the rearview mirror because you're going to wreck. If you're driving and you're looking behind you the whole time, you're looking in the rearview mirror to go see what's going on behind you, that means you can't see what's in front of you. What happens if you don't see what's in front of you? You get into an accident. Something happens. Something bad happens because you are not paying attention to what's in front of you. So, see, that just, it just be flowing. So, stop focusing on the past. The past is gone. Yesterday is over. Yesterday is over. You, you focus on the future. Yesterday is over. Tomorrow hasn't come yet. We on today. And really, you're supposed to focus on your present, but... You also have to plan for your future. Your future is what's important. Your future is everything. And you have to focus on that. You have to think positively on your future. Because if you're so focused on what happened in the past, you can't move forward. You cannot move forward if you are focused on what happened yesterday, a year ago, two years ago, 10 years ago. The future is what's important. That's already done. You can't erase that. You can't take it away. So use it as a lesson. Use it as an experience. Use it as a testimony. You can't take it away. So turn your pain into purpose. Make something positive out of it. Good. Child, this video don't have to be long because listen. <laughs> Woo, Lord.
Lord, y'all got to go back and watch the video on y'all own. But, baby, when I tell you. Different methods. Yep. And look at me now. I say, losing Those are the steps it takes to That's how the Trump movement was built. This was February 2016. The Trump movement was not created until October of that year. This is the same year that I lost Mill, which is my grandmother, Victorian publisher. But that's the same year I lost her. I had not lost her yet. She died in July. I knew I wanted to start the Trump movement then. It was technically already started. It just was not a nonprofit because when I originally started, I was my main audience was women. It was always about helping women. And then when I started the Trump movement, even then it was about helping women. And then eventually I was like, but boys need love too. Men need love too. And it's it's crazy because now I have boy mentees. Like I have male mentees. I'm closer to teen boys than I am to teen girls. And y'all would be amazed at how much they need that. Even being raised by a single mother, like, yes, they need male role models in their life, but they also need a woman that they can talk to. And y'all know me, I'm half tomboy anyway. <laughs> so it's like, I'm going to talk to you like I'm the homie. Like, I'm just that cool. Like, Miss Miranda is cool. But... I started to, you know, evolve and I started to change my way of thinking and realize that my story is for everybody. Like it's it's for everybody. It don't matter what age, it don't matter what gender, it don't matter what sexuality, it don't matter what race. My story is for everybody. And I expanded that and I grew on it and I learned to start talking to all different types of people. Like it wasn't just about women. Mainly yes. But it wasn't just about women. It wasn't just about sex abuse survivors. It was about everybody. Like, a lot of people think that I want to be an accountant or I want to be an author or I want to be a publisher. Like, that's how I want to be known. That's how I want to become famous or rich or however you want to put it. But my real purpose and what I really want to do is be a nationwide speaker. That's where my heart is, is to speak all over the world. That's what I want for myself because that's my true purpose. Yes, the Trump movement was still gone. Evans Financial Solutions was still gone. Victorian Publishing was still gone. Other people going to run that eventually. I'm not going to always be the one putting in all the work. My job and my purpose is to go around the world and speak to people. That's why I'm a motivator. That's why I stand on that title because that's what I want to do. That's what God called me to do. That is where I'm my, my most happiest, even when I'm going through a hard time. Most times when I'm motivating y'all, is I am going through a hard time. So it's because in that hard time, it's like, do what God called you to do. Do what makes you happy. And that's what it is. It's motivating. It's telling people, hey, get up. You can do this. Overcome this. Persevere against this. Tell your testimony. Release the silence. Forgive. 
that's that's what my heart is. That's what gets me going. And everybody has a purpose. And I'm gonna get on that part because it's uh, the video almost over. We had 35 minutes, and I don't care. <laughs> like hopefully you made it to the end of this like this is a must watch video because it's an updated version of something that I said a long time ago and stuff that I say all the time so and, and the, the channel is called Motive, Elements of Me Motivation Motivation with Me yes I do funny stuff and crazy stuff y'all know I cut up but at the same time I'm a motivator <laughs> like it's, it's a mix of everything but at the end of the day motivation is my thing no matter how I give it to you you are gonna get it Mm. And so that's why my favorite scripture is, in this world, you will have, have tribulation, tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I've overcome the world. John 16, 33. I was so happy. Okay, so that was that was amazing <laughs> for me to be 24 and get up up there and at a church I, I, of all places. That was a very humbling experience. It was exciting. Like I spent most of my 20s doing that. Like I, I spent most of I didn't have a normal 20 year old life. Like everything people do in their 20s, I did in my teenage years. So I didn't really had a normal 20 year old life once i turned 21 it was books motivation like life just came so fast like i literally can't believe i'm 29 now like damn <laughs> i'm almost 30 like what but it is so much growth that has happened since then like all this stuff i have now when i tell y'all i did not know that this was gonna happen that again like I worked towards it and I focused on the future and not the past, but I did not see myself here. And everybody has a purpose. Like I said in the video, God gives everybody a purpose, a talent, a gift. Every single person has that. It's up to you to figure out what that is. Some people know what their purpose is. Some people don't. I always say you know what your purpose is because you do it without even trying. That's how I know motivating is my purpose. Because I can do it without even trying. If you can do something without even trying, that's your purpose. And I also say you'll know what your purpose is because even when you try not to do it, you do it anyway. It's subconscious. Like even when you try not to do it, you still end up doing it. And if you don't know your purpose, you're not going to figure it out on your own. First of all, you need God. Because he gave it to you. So you're going to have to seek him and talk to him in order to understand what your purpose is. And not only are you going to have to talk to him to see what your purpose is, you're going to need him to keep walking it. You're going to need him to be with you on that journey. So everybody got a purpose. You who's watching this video, you have a purpose. You just got to figure out what that purpose is. And when you figure out what that purpose is, walk in it. Don't give up on it. It's going to get hard. Times are hard. For me to be a motivator, I still deal with mental health issues. I still deal with a lot of discouragement. I, I deal with a lot. But it's because of my purpose and my faith that I'm able to get through it. I'm, I'll be down for a little bit, and at the end of the day, I always know God's in control. It ain't nothing I can do about it. We, we don't control our own life. That's the problem. We always trying to control everything. I don't want to control. I'd be like, God, take the wheel. I, just, I don't want to do it. <laughs> like, I don't want to do it. Like, just do it for me. <laughs> like, do it for me because I don't want to. I don't want to. It's hard. Like, I release it unto you. Take hold because I don't want to do it. And that's what we got to do. Like, we got to stop trying to control your own life. Like, can you, now faith without works is dead. So you do have to make plans, make goals, 
like uh create your future like you do have to put in the work but at the same time you can't control the outcome you cannot control anything god is in control and you should want him to be in control because that's a lot of responsibility to put on yourself and it's some battles you can't fight it's it's not your battle to fight like god is the one that can go up against the devil you can have faith, you can pray, you can do these things to fight against him. You can put on the full armor of God because he hate me. Like he come for me like no other because he like, I am going to tell her down one way or another. But at the end of the day, God come through like, hey man, <laughs> say bro, you might want to back up off that one. Like me and God be having real conversations. He be, hey, hey chill, do not touch my anointed. She doing what I called her to do. She working, working in her purpose, let, let bag back. And literally, it's like everything changes when you think like that. Everything becomes different when you think like that. So you got to keep a positive mindset. You got to let go of all that, all that pain that's in you. Whether it, it happened, it happened, it happened. <laughs> like it happened. It ain't nothing you can do about it. It ain't nothing you can do about it. So use it, use it to your advantage, let it go, forgive, turn your pain into purpose, overcome brokenness, release the silence in some way, shape or form. Do that and I promise everything else will fall in line. You will have a prosperous life if you do that and everything else will fall in line. And I'm telling you this because I know. I know. I've, I'm a witness. I'm telling you my testimony. I've been, it, been there, seen it, done it. I know these things. So I'm telling you what I already know, what I already figured out. And I'm still figuring out as I go. I'm going to keep figuring it out at, until eternity or until I'm, I'm dead <laughs> like every day is a new lesson every day is something new I learn something new all the time and I continue to grow and grow and grow and grow hence 2016 versus now so that's what I wanted to hit y'all with today um had to give a little motivation we're 42 minutes in so hopefully you watch this to the end and if you didn't hey that's on you uh definitely forgot to tell y'all to like comment and subscribe so make sure y'all do that make sure y'all do that y'all definitely want to hit that button because it we get real around here it did it's vlogtober like <laughs> we coming with it like we coming with it because i started this youtube channel five years ago and back then it wasn't consistent and finally i was like you know what let me make this a consistent thing. Like, yes, I want to be monetized, but it's really not about the money. It's more so about saying it because the person that needs to hear these videos or see these videos, God going to make it happen. He going to make it happen. So I don't worry about nothing else. <laughs> like I, I put it out. I said it. Whoever see it, I, I pray that it helps you. And I appreciate everybody who has ever commented, who has ever sent me a message, because it's those messages and those comments that keep me going. It's I'm not just saying thank you. I appreciate it. I'm not just saying that just to be saying that. I'm serious. Because those are the things that it's like, oh, my God, like it's really working. Like my purpose is happening. God, God is making it happen. So that's all I got for y'all. I love y'all so much. Again, I hope you enjoyed. The video is on my page if you want to watch it yourself. And I will see y'all next time. Okay? Be great. Love you. Bye.